Hey kids, this is Teacher Marez, and welcome to M Kids Online. We're so, so happy that you guys could join us. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. So that we know that you tuned in with us today, just leave us a comment in our YouTube or Facebook section. Drop us a comment with your name. Awesome. So, if you had a birthday this past week, or if you'll be celebrating your birthday this coming week, we'd like to wish you a happy, happy, happy birthday. May God bless you abundantly, and we wish you many, many more amazing returns. Great. So, over the last few weeks, we've been looking at our Easter series. So we learned how Jesus came, rode with a donkey, came into Jerusalem with people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and we learned how he was betrayed, and eventually he was crucified, okay? Now that makes us sad, does it? Or should we be sad that Jesus died? But guess what? We don't have to be sad. In today's lesson, we're gonna be learning why this lesson is called a happy Sunday. So if you wanna find out more, guess what? You need to stick around and see what the rest of the lesson has in store for you. It's time for today's offering. And today, our offering verse comes from Proverbs 3, and we'll be reading from verses 9 to 10. That's Proverbs 3, and we'll be reading from verses 9 to 10. And the Bible reads, Honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything your land produces. Then he will fill your bands with grain, and your vats will overflow with the finest wine. So that's Proverbs 3, verses 9 to 10. I'll read it again. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything your land produces. Then he will fill your bands with grain and your vats will overflow with the finest wine. What the Bible is encouraging us to do is give God our best, okay? So when we have some money, we don't just give him that leftover change. No, we give him the best that we have. And guess what? The Bible says that our bands will overflow with wine. That means God is going to give us abundantly more than what we've actually given to him. So if you want to give, or if you'd like to give, there's some giving options that are popping up on your screen right now. So just ask your guardians, your parents, big brother, or any adult that's around you to help you give, and you'll be able to give today to the church. So today's memory verse, which comes from the Bible, from the book of Luke. So that's Luke chapter 18 and verse number 33. And I'm going to read it. You ready? Count me down. One, two, three. Okay. So Luke chapter 18 and verse number 33 reads, They will whip him and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. Are you guys ready to do it like two more times? So that's Luke chapter 18, verses 3, 3. And it reads, They will whip him kill him, but on the third day, he will rise again. So this is talking about Jesus, all right? So let's do it one more time. Everybody ready? Let's do the memory fingers. Memory. So that's Luke chapter 18 and verse 33. They will whip him and kill him, but on the third day, he will rise again. Now, isn't that awesome to know that our best friend in life, Jesus Christ, rose again so you and I could have life? That's amazing, right? So enjoy your life because Jesus gave it to us as a gift. Stay tuned. You guys are awesome. Before the sun had risen on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene gathered the spices and perfumes she had prepared to complete the burial customs for Jesus and made her way to the tomb. When she arrived, she discovered the giant stone had been rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Deeply distressed by what she had seen, she ran as fast as she could to tell the disciples Peter and John what had happened. They've taken our Lord's body, and we don't know where, Mary exclaimed. After hearing Mary's account, Peter and John sprinted to the tomb. John arrived first, but he did not enter the tomb. Without hesitation, Peter walked into the tomb and noticed that the strips of linen that Jesus had been wrapped up in were laying empty in a pile, and the burial cloth that was placed over his head and face was neatly folded next to them. As John entered the empty tomb, he didn't fully understand what had happened. 
but he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Puzzled by what they had seen, Peter and John returned to their homes. Too upset to return home with Peter and John, Mary Magdalene remained at the empty tomb. As she wept, she looked up through her tears into the tomb, and she saw two angels in dazzling white robes. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Seeing Mary's tears, the angels asked, Woman, why are you crying? Still sobbing, Mary replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. As Mary turned away from the angels to make her way home, she saw a man had been standing behind her. But this was no ordinary man. It was Jesus. Somehow Mary did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, still thinking he was the gardener, begged him, If you have taken him away, please tell me where so I can get him. Then Jesus called Mary's name, and suddenly she recognized that the man was Jesus. She exclaimed, Teacher! and fell to her knees to worship at his feet. Jesus told Mary to go tell the disciples. After hearing Mary's report of what happened at the tomb and that she had seen Jesus, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors, afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Suddenly Jesus appeared among them in the locked house and said, Peace to you. The disciples were overjoyed to see Jesus with their own eyes. After Jesus had shown them the wounds in his hands and his side, he told the disciples that they would continue his mission, going throughout the world and preaching God's love. So, we've come to the part of the service where we give you guys a chance and opportunity to make Jesus your friend okay so now if you want to make Jesus your friend the Bible actually tells us that all you need to do is accept in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and you need to believe it and confess it with your mouth as well that Jesus Christ came to die for you and me okay if you want to make Jesus your friend here's what you need to do you just need to repeat the following prayer after me dear God thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die in my place. Because Jesus died and rose again, I am forgiven for all my sins. And because of that, I get to live today and say that indeed, Jesus is my friend. I thank you God for everything that you've done for me. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. So guess what? If you say that prayer, if you repeated that prayer after me, you are a friend of God. Jesus is like your bestie. You and him are like tight, 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 okay? Now that Jesus is your friend, you may have some questions. You're like, uh, what, 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 what do I need to do next? You know, what are the next steps I'm going to take? So here's what we're going to do. We've got this super, super cool book here. It's called Growing Up With Jesus, okay? So if you'd like a copy of this book, if you reached out, if you say that prayer, if you repeated that prayer with us, you can ask your parents or anyone that's with you to write to the church at kids at mlfc.org. That's kids at mlfc.org. And this book will be delivered to you. Awesome. Let's pray. Everybody, Jesus loves me. Lord, thank you so much for what you've done for all of us. Help us to love one another Help us to stay smart, help us to live safe, and help us to have fun. In Jesus' name, amen. So, my dudes and dudettes, as always, I look forward to seeing you, yes you, next week. So now, praise and worship is about to come up. Now here's how we get there. Click the link in the description and go click on praise and worship and get your dance on. And also when you're done with that, click on the weekly activity. So it's a weekly thing that we do to stay up to speed with the Word of God.